Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and girls, and friends beyond the binary, it's time for the podcaster that's here to scratch that sleepy itch you have with that gentle, uh, soothing thing, you know, uh, or to make a metaphor that makes you shrug your shoulders. Uh, you say, does that have anything to do with sleep? I don't know. Can you hear a podcaster when they shrug, or shrug their shoulders or struggle to say shrug their shoulders? Uh, you know why I say it with a smile? Because it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And tonight's episode of Sleep With Me is made possible by our friends at Casper, a sleep brand that makes expertly designed products to help you get your best rest one night at a time. And you can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100-night risk-free sleep-on-it trial. Give $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash sleepwithme. And using Sleep With Me at checkout. Terms and conditions bum, 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 bum. apply, right, Buying Mr. Bard? a mattress shouldn't break the bank, so that's why every night I thank goodness for Casper. Thank goodness for Casper. Shockingly low prices for high-quality mattress. Casper.com slash sleep with me. Casper.com slash sleep with me. E- e- Casper.com slash sleep with me. $50 off any mattress you see. Casper.com slash sleep with me. Promo code S L E E P W I T H M E. Thanks, Jonathan. And all that sleepy comfort comes from the experts at Casper working tirelessly to make a quality sleep surface that cradles your natural geometry in all the right places. Uh, I love Casper so much. I bought my parents a Casper as a customer, not through some secret podcast website with a discount, uh, as a full price customer. And there's plenty of reasons why, but I wanted my parents to sleep good. Uh, and I got them the original Casper that combines multiple supportive memory foams for a quality sleep surface with just the right amounts of both sink and bounce. And when I'm in bed with Koa and she's lying across my legs and snoring in my face, uh, one thing I enjoy, and I really think my dad is going to enjoy this, dad, if you're listening is that Casper's breathable design uh, helps you sleep cool and regulate your body temperature throughout the night. So you don't get hot. You don't get like, you don't got to worry about that. You, you feel comfortable. Casper also offers two other mattresses, the Wave and the Essential. They have hassle-free returns if you're not completely satisfied. And the coolest thing is it gets delivered right to your door in a small, how did they do that size box? Next month, I'll tell you all about my parents' reaction to that. Uh, and remember, you can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100-night risk-free sleep on a trial. Get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash sleep with me and using sleep with me at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. That's casper.com slash sleep with me and use sleep with me at checkout for $50 towards select mattresses uh thanks casper uh, tonight's episode of sleep with me made possible by all the patrons who support the show on a monthly basis thank you patrons uh by chris posty posterson from sounds like an earful studios who did the theme music and edited this episode by jonathan mann on our lullabies uh kenny scotty and jennifer on our honor on our artwork i'm at dear scooter on twitter make sure you subscribe to the podcast and your podcast app of choice and you know who subscribes to Kindness are the moderators over at the listener Facebook group. Uh, uh, Julie, Jennifer, uh, Stacy, Sarah, Lauren, Keith. Uh, so I want to thank them for helping out the show in their spare time. And what do you say uh, we get on with the show? Uh, hey, you have all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep. Well, welcome. It's a Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed and turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place uh, where you can set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's thoughts, uh, feelings, uh, physical sensations, uh, and, you know, travel, uh, somebody else is out of town. Uh, you're feeling under the weather, uh, which I have been on and off uh, lately. Not by, by the time you hear this, I'll be doing great, because uh, I'm already on the upswing when I'm recording this. 
but uh, like if you're feeling down, whatever's keeping you awake, uh, tossing and turning, mind racing, trouble, you know, that, those are the general, generalized versions of it. Uh, I'm going to try to take your mind off stuff. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use these lulling, lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, uh, metaphors that go, don't go anywhere. Metaphors, uh, like if I was Doc Brown, and uh, I'd say metaphors. Uh, what's a metaphor? What, what what is a metaphor, and how do you use it? Uh, is it anything like a simile? Uh, hardy har har. You know, be just like now. I'd be the only one laughing. Uh, and they say, Marty, man, uh, what's up? What's up with the? Make some coffee or something with your orange jacket. Those are all references to a 1980s movie, uh, but Back to the Future, but the very end of it. Uh, but I, you know, like uh, sometimes your mind wants to go back in time and keep you awake about uh, stuff. That might be another reason that's you're keeping up. But this podcast uh, is meant to take your mind off stuff, keep you company. If you're new, thanks for stopping by. Uh, structurally. Uh, the show's like, uh, like may, may, maybe it's been changing a little bit, but basically the structure show starts off with business and, uh, sponsors. That's how we keep the show and all the archives free. Uh, then we have an intro that's about 12 minutes, uh, and the intro is where I kind of explain what the podcast is and go off topic and try to, you know, a player will like say, well, is it, is a metaphor anything like, uh, like is Plato, can I make Plato, can I treat a metaphor like Plato? Yeah, because I'm thinking about a metaphor about under the weather. And uh, so I come back to that. So that's the intro. It's about 12 minutes. Some listeners skip it. Some listeners get ready for bed. Some listeners fall asleep during the intro. Uh, the intro is content. It's just uh, the content to keep you content, if you don't mind me trademarking that phrase, uh, if I remember. Uh, sleep with me intro. Good for bombing your feet, uh, gathering your pets, uh, falling asleep, uh, brush, brushing your teeth, uh, bombing your elbows, your knees. Uh, yeah, I guess you could bomb your head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Uh, yeah, that'll be a good bedtime routine. And the only problem with bombing your head, I mean, I mean, B A L M, by the way, uh, hawks in the audience. I know there's so many, so many of you. Uh, but the problem with bombing your head is that, uh, it's uh, like, you know, I'm just picturing, like, you're going, boom, 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 you know, first making sound effects, uh, is uh, you can grease your pillow. And I guess it depends on, uh, you know, how much you spend on, it, like, a pillowcase is, uh, uh, I guess if you want to bomb your head, it's your business. Uh, it's something your grandmother might say in a different tone. If you want to bomb your head, it's your business, uh, Mr. Mr. Hawk. Anyway, how to get off topic? I was going to talk about being under the weather. So that's uh, the intro. Oh, structurally, the show, I got off topic. You're talking about structure. Then there's going to be a bedtime story. Uh, tonight it's our episodic modular series, uh, uh, very comforting and soothing, uh, uh, that takes place, uh, on a theme park ride or within a theme park attraction. And then we'll have some thank yous at the end. So it's the structure of the show and, uh, what to expect. Well, here's the things you can expect. You don't need to listen. They expect me to, you know, we get mixed up and stuff. Uh, uh, you're under no pressure to listen and no pressure to fall asleep. The podcast is here to keep you company and to take your mind off of whatever's keeping you awake. Uh, so for some listeners, a large portion, you know, will walk side by side with me chattering on, prattling on, meandering on. And you'll drift off in a dreamland. But some other listeners, you know, maybe you're waking up in the middle of the night or maybe you just can't sleep. I'll be here. I'll be here till the end uh, for about an hour. And if you need to, you could create a playlist and queue up back-to-back -back episodes. Uh, so that is what to expect uh, uh, structurally for the show. 
And I was going to try to make a metaphor about being under the weather. Here's my question, though. Aren't you all, like, here's the thing. Aren't you all, who, who, what, like, every once in a while I try to figure out what a phrase means. Uh, like getting your goose or whatever, which I was wrong about. It turns out it's getting your goat. Uh, but it, when they, people say you're, you're under the weather, aren't you always technically under the weather unless you're in space? Uh I mean, I don't mean to pull out a technicality here and the phraseologists of the world, but, uh, I mean, you could say you're under some weather, but then you'd, you'd always, like, I guess if, uh, when they get contrarian with, uh, they say, hey, man, wh wh why are you trolling uh, colloquial phrases? And I say, well, that might, that's my new book, uh, uh, you know, title pending, the quo colloquial uh, uh, phrase troller. Actually, maybe that'd be a good graphic novel. Somebody put that down. Gingerbread Press, uh, 2028. Uh, the Colloquial Phrase Troller or something. I forget. Uh, also, to my imaginary system, look up what colloquial means, please. Uh, and edit all, all. Well, too late to edit any of this out. Uh, but here's the thing. You're always under the weather. Uh, you just might not be. I mean, I guess maybe they put the phrase in it. When the weather stinks. Uh uh, you don't want to be under that weather. Uh, but, I mean, if the sun says that's weather, right? Clear, We can agree that the weather person would report clear skies as weather. They wouldn't say, okay, we're only reporting bad stuff here. I mean, they say that's the stuff we use the Doppler for in the big teasers before. Uh, you know, come back, uh, Wayne Maher here. NWS certified. I got some weather on hand. Great weather, unless it's a long weekend. And then, of course, it's a good time to give. Uh, I mean, here's the thing: don't do this. But if you're in bed and you're not feeling good, and your grandmother comes to visit, you say, "Oh, are you under the weather?" You say, "Friggin', of course I'm under the weather." Yeah, uh, unless I'm in orbit. Uh, I, I, there's another phrase trolling. I didn't even. Sorry, Grandma. I didn't mean to phrase troll you, but. Uh, uh, it just, it just really sticks out to me now. You see, well, yes, I'm always under the weather. Um, it just like, when you say, well, I'm under weather, that sucks. Uh, that's why I'm curled up in my blankets. Uh, I don't know. I never realized, how about like, I don't know if we can get Oxford and, uh, the rest of them, Webster's, uh, uh, I'd love to sneak into that meeting and create some chaos and be like, uh, okay, but t t t table topic or whatever, uh, Point of order, uh, I, uh, here on the agenda, getting rid of uh, the phrase under the weather uh, due to it technically being always true. Uh, argument for uh, getting rid of it also presenting as Pythagoras uh, and a few other you know logic pros on my side. I don't know who's presenting against keeping it. Uh, oh, soup, the soup industry. Oh, it turns out they're a billion-dollar industry. So it looks like, uh, sorry, Pythagoras. Uh, uh, pay, do you know anything about Do you know Icarus? I always think, it, I don't know why I would think uh, Icarus could have used you, Pythagoras. Uh, do you know Marty McFly? Okay, sorry, let me get back to the listeners. I'm actually in the middle of a podcast intro. You'll have to excuse me. Oh, everyone, thanks uh, for inviting me. To, is this a symposium? Uh, I'd love to actually be invited as guest next year. We could talk about being under the, anybody feeling under the weather after that. Uh, uh, oh, soup company. Oh, Oxford Dictionary now sponsored by Campbell's Soup. That's good news. See, I, I, I'm solving problems here. Uh, here. Just an idea. I don't mean to blow uh, uh, whatever smoke. I don't need to bring up another phrase. I don't know what it means, but. Uh, you shouldn't, I don't know if soups and dictionaries mix. Uh, I mean, a great idea on paper, but you get soup on paper, especially dictionary paper. Okay, the dictionary barons are not happy with me. Anyway, so if you're new here, podcast a little bit goofy and silly. Yeah, it goes off uh, topic, but it's here for when you're under sucky weather. Uh, whether it's stormy weather. I'll be, I won't be like uh, someone singing you the song Stormy Weather, but hopefully I'll create the same feeling of, you know, when I hear that song, my shoulders get chill, man. And I say, you know, I want to slink around. 
And when the weather's stinky, you know, you get on, you know, get under your bed, bomb your feet, bomb your head if you wish, uh, get comfortable. I'll be here to keep you company. You know, whether the weather outside is frightful or simply delightful, uh, it is, you know, there's no place to go but bed. So get comfortable, turn out the lights and press play, as I always say. I'm here to help. I've been there. Uh, sleepless in the deep, dark night, and I want to uh, keep you company while you drift off. Thank you so much for trying this show. And I really hope and I really yearn to help you fall asleep. Thanks for coming by. And uh, here's, a, here's a few messages of how we uh, keep this show going. Uh, before we get to the story here, don't forget tonight's episode of Sleep With Me sponsored by Casper. Uh, the mattress that Scoots would buy for his parents. Uh, so, I mean, I don't, it's like, uh, I don't think it needs any more endorsed. Uh, I don't think it needs a bigger endorsement than that. Uh, I want them to get good night's sleep because they deserve it just like you do. And you can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100-night risk-free sleep on a trial. And you get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash sleep with me. And you sleep with me and check it. And you sleep with me. And you sleep with me at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. And what do you say we keep the show going? All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of our uh, ongoing uh, serial uh no, no, so I guess it's a episodic uh, yeah, a series that doesn't really have a title and doesn't really have an introduction. Uh, but for a transition, I just want you to picture yourself riding a bike. Uh, could be, maybe it's even one of those uh, bikes that doesn't move. I'm not sure what they're called, but uh, it could be a bicycle built for two or one or a stationary bike. Uh, even one of those new high tech ones with the, the commercials where you say, wow, uh, these people should be in a commercial. And you're pedaling, and the motion of the pedals, the sound of the wheels, uh, the forward motion, or the illusion of a forward motion. Uh, the near white noise you generated. Maybe you're even on one of those fan bikes. My dad had one of those, but it's, uh, it's nice, uh, it's calming, and it's, uh, we're on a straight pa- path. Uh, it's dim, but you can see everything, and you trust the path is clear, because uh, you say, wait a second, this is just a clear path, uh, and it's nice and gentle, rolling and pedaling over and over, uh, like the wheels that keep on turning. The wheels that they do keep a turning. Uh, but these wheels aren't, aren't big. I guess you could consider them larger than small wheels. And there's the wheels, uh, uh, that the pedal c- c- crank a thing Majig connects to, and the pedals themselves are, have all wheels or circles. Um, and there's the bike wheels. You could consider the uh, handlebars a wheel. Like, I guess you say, well, what's the difference between a circle and a wheel? And you might chuckle and say, well, what? Uh, actually, there's a big difference between a circle and a wheel. And I would say, well, in cartoons, there isn't, uh, you know, except sometimes it was a square wheel, and that was usually the butt of a far side joke. Uh, so uh, you're riding along, you're pedaling along, and you're transitioning from your bed into a world, uh, into a queue for a ride. Uh, with long, well-lit hallways uh, where you see our heroine and uh, you begin to rest. Ah, yes, you arrived uh, here finally. And I had been waiting for you. Uh, I know some of the other rides were concerned with impressing you. I wasn't really worried about that. I wasn't overconfident. I was the last attraction opened at the parks here. The newest. 
And I don't think I need to say say it. You, you, if you were here at the time of my opening, in the reaction to my opening, I was considered uh, the story behind my ride actually got more uh, positive. I don't, is it positive criticism? I'm already forgetting. So good to have you here, though. But we, we our, our, this ride, and, and I, you know, I couldn't explain it to you when you first arrived. Uh, the fact that this story of my ride is a prequel uh, to the third more, most successful uh, Hollywood blockbuster of all time. It had come out a few years before, and immediately, uh, well, they, they finally, as soon as the movie came out, they greenlit what had already been, they had started working on uh, eight months before, expecting the movie to do quite well, but not as well as it did. And they had planned many sequels for, for the movie, and that was part of the, the, the process of developing the ride, was they said, well, maybe we should make the ride a prequel, uh, since we're making a sequel film. And, you know, the dates of movies and rides don't always intersect perfectly. And this was uh, the, the last big ticketed ride, too. And because uh, the movie had done so well, people were very optimistic. And so lots was poured into the story behind the attraction. Uh, the ride itself was based on a our Sister Parks ride of a different title. Uh, very up-to-date technology, but nothing extremely new in fact the ride would be a mirror layout to that ride which had opened eight years earlier uh but that's why the engineers uh put so much work into the storytelling aspect and the characters of that blockbuster film were so beloved and uh, the the tactic, you know, that the uh, engineers and the story uh, engineers uh, put into this uh, prequel attraction was not what people expected. But it told, uh, it was just interesting, I guess. I guess I am full of myself, uh, but, you know, what would an attraction be if she wasn't full of herself, uh? I mean, I guess it could be like some of the other attractions you've encountered. But I thought about it long, uh, expecting your arrival, because you had never, now you've seen films before, but mostly park film, and you've never seen the movie uh, that my ride is a prequel to, uh, Panda Force uh, was the movie, of course, uh, if any historians were checking on uh, movies, I don't know that there will be, an, uh, it may be permanently uh, the third most successful Hollywood blockbuster of all time. So I guess it's good, you, you, you know, they didn't make a sequel, they didn't have a chance to make a sequel or many other blockbuster films and seeing the prequel I don't know what it'll do. I think that there was so much uh, that uh, Panda Force did not tell, but people felt uh, so attached to the characters, uh, the heroes and heroines of the movie, uh, that they really loved my attraction. You know, we're talking unprecedented waits, uh, three-hour waits uh, to see this attraction. Uh, where they eventually did quickly do away with the queue because it was too long and tested out different reservation systems in ways to keep it fair so that people could just report back to the ride. They tested that in other attractions, uh, but they never needed it as much. Uh, but I'm talking too much. I'm talking... You arrived and you explored the queues as you do. 
And our queue had kind of prepared for both, not three-hour waits, but it was a long queue, uh, mirroring the queue at our sister park to carry, uh, because the ride at our sister park had to be built far. Um, uh, it's a pad, what the engineers call the place where they build the attraction. It had to be beyond the berm, as they said. And so you had to follow a very circuitous route uh, in the sister ride. It set up the adventure aspect of the ride. Uh, but in this, it set up the story, uh, the world, and the characters, uh, the members, the future members of Panda Force, in a way. As you walked, uh, you went by their schoolroom. And not all of them were at the same school. So different school things, uh, seeing the students uh, behaving. And you quickly learned that the members of Panda Force were far than perfect students. And uh, interpersonally, they all had uh, issues you wouldn't think. Uh, you'd say, well, if I was choosing who was going to be Pink Panda, I don't know if I would choose that behavior like... Uh, so again, I wondered what your experience was, uh, but you were really taken as a, again, our ride of like a few other newer ones was pretty hermetically sealed. And, uh, so most of the attraction was fairly intact. Uh, but we, you know, the Q, Q was able to do exposition about the characters, not really their backstory, just to who they were as uh, to, to, tween teen, uh, teens, I guess. I guess uh, in the queue, they were tweens. Uh, at the end of the queue, they were teens. Uh, but you saw how Pink Panda uh, did not have an abundant attitude. And uh, was very worried about uh, shortages and things. And and then you'd have the teachers talking about life on the archipelago. As uh, yeah, that's where Panda Force, uh, the film, took place as well. And the great archipelago, uh, which was a metaphorical land or a fictional land of... Uh, Islands, archipelago, with a major city at the center. And as we got to meet Orange Panda and Blue Panda, Purple Panda and Red Panda, can you see Orange Panda, like, uh, doing, like, uh, Orange Panda wasn't always uh, the most supportive of, uh, as a student. Uh, this is pre-Panda. But everyone just knew them. Even right away, uh, Orange Panda, currently known as the Protective Panda. But in this guy, case, uh, in the tween years, uh, not always, not always except of Orange Panda stuff. So we'd see a cumulative of bad choices, and again, and then a uh, story being eked out with either the news or the adults saying, well, uh, Smagira uh, is, you know, in the, the great garbage patch. Uh, uh, so things from our world, too, uh, were uh, all coming together. And Smagira would come out of the sea and visit the archipelago islands and say, hey, let me take an island for you polluting the sea and the sky. And I'll just take it down here uh, under the under the sea for a while. And usually it was an outlying island. But still the people said, what are we to do? And why does Smagira, who was the, the, the human name, uh, for this uh, uh, sea being, very large uh, sea being. And again, we would see maybe Purple Band, uh, you know, kind of uh, telling on other students or judging their behavior. And you say, but Purple Panda, 
the vindicator and the validator. Was a tattletale in school? What? Uh, but you you didn't really know that you would just look in on these home scenes, and I think you picked up on the the story. Oh, more uh, moving towards the big city. How are we going to prepare? Uh, are we one archipelago, or are we just a collection of I like not a collection of just islands? Uh, and we, we, we would also see uh, Red Panda, uh, who was always the one. Red Panda, the planning panda, panda, yeah, separate from the panda planner. But uh, in this case, Red Panda just kind of reacted to things back as a school student. And I think they use the the cue to overexpose you uh, if you weren't a, if you didn't see Panda Force uh, thirty or forty times in the theater. Some children did, and adults. Yeah, Blue Panda was uh, that that would be the comic relief uh, if if they laid out a big piece of news about Smog era. Then they would show Blue Panda, who was a bit of a bumbler. Blue Panda was so uh, concerned with thinking and being perfect and of what could happen uh, that Blue Panda was very clumsy. You see, Blue Panda, the most balanced of the panda force, uh, the one you associate with uh, like a zen-like attitude, He's a bumbler. Uh, but then people said, oh, it makes perfect sense, especially because, you know, all the actors uh, from the film and actresses, uh, they voiced the characters and stood as models uh, for the tronics and the projections. And then as the queue ran to an end, it became the call, the president and, and uh, the, the elected officials of the archipelago I think I may have mispronounced my own attraction. You know, I'm getting old as an attraction, even though I'm the newest here at the park. Uh, it's a call for all the youth. Uh, uh, the call that we would uh, find a way uh, that if we banded together as islands, uh, we could defend and that they had a training center, a training base, and every youth, uh, every able-bodied adult had already been called, uh, but uh, they had a secret plan, and uh, they called the youth out to, to a special island from all the islands. Uh, it was a great mountain at its center, and within that mountain, purportedly, was a, a, a training center with a great uh, uh, former leader, Octavia. And she was to train, I guess we would say, the Panda Force. But in the queue and in the story, uh, the, the next batch of heroes and heroines. And then the last bit about the queue was both the technicalities uh, for guests riding the ride, but also casting the guest in the role of uh, a, poor, a reporter uh, embedded uh, to go along. And, and the ride took place in Jeeps. Now, those were not functioning on my attraction. And luckily, you had found a bicycle somewhere. So that was a little bit embarrassing for me. But uh, the Jeeps, even when the, the ride was functioning, they always had issues. But uh, the guest would be a team of reporters covering uh, this historical day uh, as the children made their way uh, to, the, to the training island and into the basin. Uh, very little details were given to the children. Uh, other than the fact that maybe this was a test uh, in that all, not all of the children, you know, only the, the greatest of the heroes and heroines uh, uh, could make it to the training center. Uh, but they knew that they would need other people in support roles. Uh, but, they, you know, that, that just bogged down the story trying to explain that uh, 
you know, some children wouldn't be uh, the lead heroines and heroines, but they could, uh, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, they, yeah, that part is just, was it a test uh, uh, to get into training base on Training Island? And that's where the ride began with the reporter setting out, uh, and the jeep would go across children running. And we would see children getting tired, and then we started to go in over hallways, uh, which you could see on your bike, even though they were designed with lighting and essentially great big hallways, just as part of the ride. And children running, and then we could pick out the children from the queue or from the movie Panda Force uh, and see them. Uh, and none of our children were very heroic, and none of them were in very good shape, and none of them were good at finding their way to the mountain. And it even played in, you know, to, you know, the children being more worried about their, you know, the tween, a teen hangups, uh, more worried about watching videos or looking good or eating or being with their friends or missing their parents, whatever uh, tropes uh, these children fell into them. And eventually a few of the children found a fire and the evening had fallen. And luckily you were on a bike so you could really soak all this in. And it would gathered around the fire uh, were some children, but then, as we said, Orange Panda was not exactly the nicest uh, to teen. And uh, the only children left around the fire were the five that we know so well now. And they sat around this uh, fire trying to sleep and arguing with one another and kind of getting on each other's nerves. Uh, but eventually, uh, Purple Panda... She said, you know, I don't know. I think this is a test and uh, to get inside. And they said, well, what we, if we don't fail the test? And she said, probably give us a secondary or third, you know, like a greasing, you know, like a repairing stuff, uh, a support role, or who knows. And the kid, none of the children, of course, wanted that uh, support role. And... Uh, she said, we got it. This is a test. I'm positive of it, and we're lost. We're failing the test. Uh, we have to find a way uh, in, and we'll have to use our wits. And uh, despite the fact that we don't like one another, and uh, you know, she picked apart everybody's downsides, uh, she said, uh, we have to come up with a plan. And they came up with a plan again that was not heroic. Uh, some of the children remembered some of the more adept uh, students from the ride over, and that were very that had very overly heroic qualities, and said, "Well, maybe that person would come try to rescue." And so uh, they uh, eventually, and this was again, this part was uh, you wouldn't if you weren't riding a bike, you could have missed all this. Uh, and people didn't have the chance to ride this ride constantly to pick up on all these details, just passing these little scenes. And some of it was just paintings and things. Yeah, but you were really drawn in by their behavior, their imperfect, very human behavior. And eventually they got a couple other much uh, more adept students uh, to lead them towards the base. Uh, uh, in exchange for L.O.V., thinking that, you know, oh, I'm so, you know, love, lovely, dovey, you know, or of working as a team, and them, 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 uh, uh, sending the, the, the heroic, uh, quote-unquote, to, that had helped the five of them off in the wrong direction once again, and our team of uh, five uh, found their way into the base. And uh, they thought they were so good, and they found their way into this entrance chamber, 
which was very set up with old panda statues and uh, you see, is this, this is some sort of panda based uh, belief system. And the pa- a voice came out of a stone panda, you know, about choice and choosing. And this was a part where you thought you had a choice where the ride was going to go. Uh, you know, do you like, uh, do you want to take the path of, and then it showed the pink, it didn't hint about the panda force yet, uh, you know, the bay, but it used uh, different colors of the pandas as different possible paths for training. Uh, the path of the balance, you know, but the blue, but you know, it, it was, but, uh, then at the last second, the path turned to the far right, uh, and the voice said, but you have already chosen. And then the ride would move forward, uh, to the right, away from the uh, different paths, uh, and they ended up in a room, and standing in the center of the room, at the top uh, front side of the room, was Octavia, the trainer. And she said, you, you know, you chose, I, this was a test, and the five of you failed. And then the five uh, heroes uh, and heroines uh, argued with uh, the trainer, Octavia. And she laughed, and she said, uh, uh, we've got reports of uh, Smagira coming. One last chance for you to be heroic uh, would be to run off uh, uh, down here uh, and create a distraction for Smagira so we can seal the base. And, uh, you know, the, the real good students are already in the training base up top. You know, otherwise you'll just all go back home and, uh, you know, you won't even get a support role because you, and they said there was no, you know, back and forth, uh, and Octavia said, and then it's my gear of all people broke over the speakers and said, Octavia, this is my gear. This is the first time my gear had speaking English, spoken, uh, the English language and, Everyone said it is silence, uh, and it's Maggie said, "No, Octavia, you've fallen into my trap because uh, I'm going to take uh, the, the top of the mountain away and uh, uh, into the sea with me." And Octavia said, "Well, that's where all the students, all the training." And uh, it's Maggie said, "Exactly, all your prize students." Uh, I guess you'll be down there with those five students you're busy shaming or whatever. Good luck. Uh, and then there's a rumbling in the ride, and Octavia frowned greatly. And then some, you know, video feed of this supposedly security video of uh, some gear taking the top of the mountain. And then it would change scenes and be with Octavia, who said, oh... Octavia was very down at this point and said, well, we seem to be stuck down here. We're in the lowest, uh, lowest part of the base. Uh, and it looks like there was some over spillage shift from the top of the mountain being taken, but there's plenty of food down here. Uh, this was, you know, where some of the support staff was going to live and, uh, below us was R and D. Though none of you, we didn't have any of you thinking you'd be in R and D. Uh, but the rest of the base is gone. Just us, just us six. Uh, and Octavia said, "I fa- I failed. I, I guess I shouldn't. I should have. Uh, not only did I let you down, I've let down all the other uh, students and the archipelago. Uh, if there's nothing, we'll be. You know, the whole nine yards." Uh, and with that, Octavia went into a deep sleep. Uh, and the five students, uh, they ate at first. And again, this was a, this is only, now this was all content that was in the ride, but you could only experience it in multiple ride throughs or if you went through the ride on a bike. Uh, all these long discussions. Uh, you know, the engineers were like, well, if the ride breaks down, then each uh, four-minute scene is actually 
uh, 18 two-minute scenes that could be consumed at any point because uh, the pictures and the images tell the story just as much as the words. Uh, but in this case, uh, I'm just recounting when you first experienced. I guess I'm just uh, wanting you to remember uh, the pain, the beginnings of the Panda Force. Uh, and so the five students, uh, they went back to their old ways of arguing and saying, well, we'll find a way out of here, out of this base, uh, is what we'll do. And they say, well, what about this Octavia? And they said, well, just leave her here or whatever. She's just sleeping and down because she failed us. Uh, and you'd see Octavia could hear that and uh, squirm. Uh, what, and then they say, well, what is there to go back to? Uh, Smug here, there's a... Uh, they say, what is it? What was with the adults just planning on us 18 year olds uh, saving the world anyway? Uh, it doesn't seem like the greatest of plans. Uh, how will we even stop uh, Smagira anyway? Yeah, this person here is supposed to train us. Uh, but then Pink Panda, she, she said, uh, huh, like. Uh, she said, I guess I feel like I failed, too. I didn't realize. Uh, and looked back, and the students, the five of them, started to share what we'd seen in the queue. At the time, they weren't perfect, and say, well. And they realized they had all that in common, that none of them were perfect or very good to begin with. Uh, if you were going to be judged on, you know, on your just your public behavior or whatever, that they said, well, we're just uh, people, b b b kids making kid choices. Uh, and they said, well, should we take Octavia with us as they started to grow and this bond between them grew, bond of imperfection? They said, maybe we should try to save her. Maybe we can't get out of here. Maybe you're right. Even if we get out, Smagir is out there. And they said, well, how would we save Octavia? Uh, and they said, well, what if we let her train us and, you know, think that, uh, and they said, well, that's a good idea. And they said, well, how are we, she just keeps sleeping. And, and they said, well, let's just start training ourselves. And then she'll naturally start to correct us when we don't do it wrong. And they said there's got to be a training room, even with R. There's got to be R and D training room. So they started exploring deeper into the lower levels of the base, and they found a, a giant training room, and that's where the next part of the ride and most of the ride, this huge, impressive chamber, uh, strategically shadowed, so that you could go through different layers, uh, and everything would be revealed one part at a time. And it started with the students training and then activity. This was a montage uh, as you circled the outside of the room. And then, you know, Octavia basically saying, that's not how you do a duck and roll. That's not Tai Chi. And uh, this is, you know, what a, you know, flowing motion is. And eventually, Octavia being reborn in some sense and training these five, uh, first in basic martial arts. And I guess that's where you spend a lot of your time because all of this was real motion tronics and uh, based on real uh, training techniques. You spend uh, hours and weeks down there uh, training with the Panda Force. And again, this was uh, the physical fitness you would take with you to other attractions as well. And even though you were younger than the panda force, I felt like you were in love with one or two of the pandas. Uh, and I said, she's, uh, I, I, I said, that is just amazing. Uh, that she, what she sees, uh, and these heroines and heroes, uh, it's awakened something within her on more than one level. But you trained with them and watched them train and watched, uh, 
Octavia's face and then uh, again watch some of the news feeds to tell the story of Smagira and to set a ticking clock for the end of the ride, of course. And the ticking clock, uh, some Smagira sent to say, well, I'm going to take the rest of the archipelago into the sea all for one. Uh, meant that uh, uh, Octavia needed to reveal something. And that was a deeper in the base, uh, in R and D, where the, uh, the, the 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 panda the panda defense force, the panda force, uh, which were uh, a giant panda, you know, not just suits, ships, uh, panda ships, uh, each one with a different skill set that each of you had been training for. And, of course, being able to be combined into one giant panda, uh, Pandera, uh, the great panda, you know, Pandera, 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 uh, it was what you would say as you assembled into panda, panda body, panda arm, panda leg, panda leg two. And then you started to train as panda force. Uh, with the panda suits, uh, but still, Octavius, said we won't be ready. Uh, like out there, we still don't have enough training. Uh, we've just been training in here. And they gave Purple Panda an idea, and Purple Panda said, Well, Octavia, Smagira knows we're in here. Uh, what if we, uh, uh, go back, revert to our old ways, our old crafty ways, and uh, get some my gear to come here. And uh, the purple panda said, what do you think? And Octavia said, well, what would be? And Octavia said, I guess, uh, I, I guess, uh, and that was even a deeper prequel, was, of course, my gear was a, a original pupil of Octavia years before training in some other situation, but that would be a pre-prequel. And so that is where the great, the big finale, of course, of the attraction took place, still most of it in the big room of uh, uh, them leaking out stuff. So some my gear would pick up on the fact that they were getting ready to assemble Panda Force, uh, and then Panda Force, uh, actually, because they had, of course, luckily they built more than one panda suit, but some of them were only half built. Uh, so taking the half built suits and putting them in the training room to draw in uh, Smigera along with Octavia and uh, trying to say, hey, we're going to fix this. We're going to stop Smigera. Don't worry, everybody. And then Smigira arriving at the base, uh, and of course, you know, giving a long, drawn-out speech to Octavia, and to what Smigira thought were some of the Panda Force uh, suits, uh, and the students acting like they were going to rush uh, to the suits, uh, and of course, Smigira then, and, and I guess at the time we didn't, you didn't know, the, like. Uh, the first time you ride the ride, you say, oh, no, that's Pink Panda suit's been, or ship has been, you know, Panda Bot, whatever you want to call it, has been destroyed. You know, but that was only the shell of the R&D triple backup, so partially assembled. And then assemble Panda Force, Pandera, Pandera, they assembled and... As the ride, it was, first it was in a big room with lots of special effects. Uh, was uh, like uh, the Panda Force uh, first individually and then assembling. Uh, in the car going past, both of their both Smagir and Panda Force's uh, real effects, uh, giant effects, uh, uh, interlocked in a dance of. Uh, Eternal, you know, tales all this time, and then revealing uh, uh, that you know Smagir had uh, lost. To, they said, "Well, well, we'll figure out a way to clean up the garbage patch." What do you think about that? Now that we have Panda Force, uh, 
It's not just about you, Smag here. It's about cleaning some of this uh, up. And that would remove a large portion of your mass. Uh, and so Smagira having to retreat back to the sea and victory. But of course the victory came uh, like where Octavia couldn't enjoy the victory except from far away from a farm bigger, you know, before robotic panda forces could be. And the panda force going to the cities of the archipelago and... Uh, being a force of inspiration and good, but also saying, hey, we got to uh, work together, all of us humans. Uh, and also a force of projection that, uh, you know, what would set up, uh, you know, it was almost like it, 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 they skipped over the first movie because they had the prequel after the movie, you know, but then that was the first Band of Force movie was, uh, you know, Downfall. And it was, it was so when it opened, Panda Force was already at a high, which actually made for a better film, of course. Uh, but that's talking about the movie, which you may never be able to see. But you, uh, I think, loved more than one member of the Panda Force because you knew them to be people. And you hadn't experienced these uh, imperfections of people, of... Uh, uh, making choices that uh, aren't always excellent. Uh, you get to ride your bike through the ride. And then, of course, the end of the ride was, uh, you know, Panda Force chasing Smygira. And at first they thought they permanently had busted Smygira, but nothing would hold. No, that's what Smygira says. At the, they say, we've caught you, Smygira. And Smygira says, nothing will hold Smygira. And Smygira gets away. Uh, and says, I'll return Panda Force uh, one day. And that fateful day is, of course, uh, uh, the, uh, I think, it, I don't know if it's the act, like, uh, I don't know, it's the two, you know, but almost the middle of Panda Force uh, downfall. Uh, but yeah, you spend a lot of time in here and uh, with me, uh, and it was uh, it was nice to have you here. It was nice to see that look, that smile on your face, uh, and to see you attracted to more than one type of panda. Uh, to me, says uh, uh, I don't know that there's. Uh, they could feel the butterflies uh, surrounding your heart, uh, the excitement. Uh, you didn't really have a lot of love for Red Panda or Orange Panda, but uh, it was good, I think, uh, for you to have a crush on a few members of Panda Force and for you to know that uh, they're not just like you, but in some sense they were, and for you to train uh, for what you're training, I don't know. And uh, what is the caretaker? What, what is this? Uh, but I feel like I prepared you uh, physically a little bit and emotionally. Pain force isn't perfect, uh, and you don't need to be. I'm glad you came here, and I'm glad you spent time with me. And you saw that uh, the Panda Force could r respect one another, that they could bond over the fact that uh, they said, yeah, no, no, no. I wrote some bad words on uh, someone's paper. And then someone else said, well, I tattled on you for that because I knew you'd get in trouble. Uh, and they said, yeah, what the heck were we thinking? Uh, Meanwhile, so we got some gear in the garbage patch out there. We're worried about kids' stuff. And then some say, well, we are just kids. And, and then how much uh, uh, respect Octavia commanded uh, from all of them and from you, even though she's just a tronic, uh, that you could respect her as an imaginary mentor. And... A dream of being a member of Panda Force. You even getting in the suits uh, and trying to squeeze. I said, is she trying to squeeze in there uh, with Purple Panda? 
Uh, and they, you know, they, 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 we couldn't just pull the uh, tronics out of the ride. Uh, but it was good, and it was good to see you uh, on the bike. Uh, I was embarrassed that the uh, Jeeps weren't working, but I think because uh, you were able to stop and put your kickstand down and spend some time within me, it was nice. Uh, it was nice to have you. Thank you. I want to thank people that support the show on Patreon. Tommy, Ian, Rachel, thanks, thanks, and good night. Meg, Monica, and Christopher, thanks, thanks, and good night. Aaron, Jane, and Colin, thanks, thanks, and good night. Alexis, J, and H, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Kenneth, Chris, uh, and Lauren, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Morgan, Kyrie, and Colleen, thank you, thank you, and good night. Uh, Marak, uh, uh, Julie, and Carl, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, John, Claire, and uh, Susie, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Potty, Hannah, and Amy, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Kenna, Emily, and Josh, uh, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Deborah, Monica, and Jared, thank you, thanks, and good night. Alan, Karen, and Thomas, uh, thank you, thanks, and good night. Alexandra, Aaron, and Sarah, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Josh, Sean, and Eden, uh, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, BG, uh, Jeffrey, and Patricia, thanks, thanks, and good night. Eliza, Caitlin, and Wanda, thanks, thanks, and good night. Aaron, Diane, and Felipe, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Kate, Cassandra, and Jaina, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Michael, Nicole, and Daniel, thanks, thanks, and good night. Stephanie, Amy, and Pamela, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Joy, Julia, and Andrew, thanks, thanks, and good night. Erica, E, and Nikki, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Liz, Julia, and Jonathan, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, B, Amorette, and Craig, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Chris, uh, Brittany, and Rom, uh, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Kevin, uh, Diana, and Megan, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Patricia, Stephanie, and Sean, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Paul, Arden, and Mark, uh, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Jennifer, Lucy, and Catherine, thanks, thanks, and good night. Kathy, Hallie, and Adrian, thank you, thanks, and good night. Michael, Kelly, and Dan, uh, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Jessica, Matt, and Jarrett, thank you, thanks, and good night. Emily, Sean, and Jennifer, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Adrian, Cara, and Rosie, thanks, thanks, and good night. Chris, Kat, and Louise, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Teresa, uh, Joanne, and Melissa, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Josh, uh, Jenny, and Ken, uh, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, and thanks, thanks everybody uh, for supporting the show. Good night.